Oh my goodness. I have such a treat for you on the Wednesday podcast today. Lori is here with her dad, JB. And I just said to JB, he is quite, he is quite the fan club here in organized 365. It's hard for him to believe. And they're mostly women, JB. They're all, all cheering you on in your Sunday basket and watching what you're doing every week. Um, so I'm really excited to have this conversation with you today. Thank you. Thank you. So I believe it was Lori that introduced you to Organize 365, but tell me, how did you first become aware of this Sunday basket organizing, what Lori was doing, and when did you become interested in participating? Well, Lori's a teacher, and teachers don't give up very easy. And uh, (laughs) yeah, then she becomes like a police officer. You're not going to get away with it unless you do it. And Basically, I got involved in it with Lori or through Lori. Well, I started getting him used to putting some papers into a basket on the counter, knowing I eventually wanted him to do Sunday basket. But he used to have papers spread all over the kitchen table, and it was causing a lot of grief and anxiety. I didn't know what to do with them. So by getting him to put them in a basket, they were at least off the kitchen table where he would eat with my stepmom. And then we could deal with the papers later. Yes, I've, okay. lived, I've lived the last 17 years married, and I would find very important papers in a magazine <laughs> or in a book or under a, a, a pillow in a, in a chair. It, it could be any place. But So if you don't mind sharing, just to give us some context for our conversation, can you tell us? where you live, and who lives with you, and how old you are. I'm 92 years old. We'll be 93 in August. And right now, Lori is staying with me. So if I fall down, she can help me get up. You know, mm-hmm. I had, That hadn't happened, by the way, but you never know. And uh, what else did she ask? Well, surely. And, and or, My stepmom. Mm-hmm. Well, she used to live here, but she's in an Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's home now and has been since uh, January the 26th of this year. So yeah. about 11 months. Yeah. Almost 12. So it's been a lot of change all at once. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Lori, how long have you been living with your dad? I've been coming over every day uh, in this whole year, but the idea of starting to organize papers, we agreed that I would stay on the couch just for a couple of days to sort of dig in and find the most important things. Turned out to be a much bigger job and I haven't left. Well, she lives <laughs> almost 30 miles from here and mm-hmm. it takes half hour to 45 minutes to get here from her house. Plus the school where she teaches is like 10 minutes maybe from here, from my house. Hmm. And uh, so it's it's, Helped her as well a little bit. But she's yeah, so, been, been coming over to take care of me, make sure I'm okay. Well, don't you love feeling loved? Yes, I do that too. It it seems like she enjoys it, JB. Yeah, she she's a sweetheart. She's my it, baby. It seems like you enjoy it as well. I do. Yeah. I do. It's better than talking to the walls, too. <laughs> <laughs> As long as the walls don't start talking back, we can keep going with this conversation. (laughs) A time or two that happened, and and then I begin to wonder if I'm going a little buggy, you know. Just turn on a podcast. I'll talk to you when Lori's not there. He he doesn't know what a podcast is. No, I have no clue. (laughs) We'll we'll get you a a radio that plays me as a podcast. (laughs) So, Lori, how long have you been uh, living at your dad's house then? Since the beginning of May. Okay. And it started okay. out with just the idea of looking for important papers, mm-hmm. like things like deed to the house, you know, title for the car. And that took basically all summer. Mm-hmm. We, had, <laughs> we had, well, you haven't asked about where we found all these papers yet, but. Well, tell us. We had, uh, what, eight or nine uh, uh, storage cabinet drawers, stuff mm-hmm. full of stuff full of papers it was about the equivalent of four or five four drawer filing cabinets randomized 
And I just the other day found uh, <laughs> income tax reports for 2001 or two. 11. You found 11. No, I found one or two. And I, I would find electric bills from the 1970s next to tax papers from 2018. That's, mm -hmm. the, mess, that's the mess we had here. And I couldn't find a thing. Nothing. My How wife long? always said she could find it, but she couldn't. How long have you lived in your home, JB? We probably uh 15 years 16. Somewhere and before there. that i lived down on down south of here about a mile and a half mm -hmm. and uh, surely lived two or three blocks uh south west of me we had never met until this one and then and, and surely's daughter went to a uh, a school thing a camp life and the two of them met there and they Got to talk about her mom and my now my wife. And they said, well, dad just sits around watching TV or playing on a computer all day. Uh, why don't we get them together? And so they went to work at that. And I guess it's like an injection for the flu. It, it takes or it don't take. <laughs> but it, it worked out. And sure and I got married December the 27th, back in 2003. And been so ever since. 17 years. You've been married 18. 17 years. Yeah. 18. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just turned 18. How long had you lived in your previous house before you got married? Oh, Lord, about 40. I don't know. We moved in there about 1959. And, and we, then did you move all of that to the new house or did you declutter it all when you moved 17 years ago? Oh, no. You, you hardly find anything of mine around here. <laughs> it's, Everything is with service, and I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Everything. But you brought your paper, or no, you didn't bring anything? I don't, I don't remember bringing any paper because I used to keep it pretty well sorted out in the other house, but I haven't done it now in 17 years. Mm -hmm. So I kind of lost, lost the uh, how to. You know? Well, and, and Alzheimer's messes with your brain in so many different ways. And one of the things that was a focus for my stepmom was paper. She wanted to hold it, touch it, deal with it. But that meant even the paper you should throw out like a blank paper in a bill would mm -hmm. stay with her and an empty envelope mm -hmm. and nothing would get thrown away. Yeah, or something you're looking for, we would find in a magazine or in a book. She yeah. read yeah. books, but she read magazines. So you would have been... 40 magazines coming here and she'd have all of them full paper. <laughs> like she's a hoarder, but she really wasn't. Uh-huh. Well, it's a level of stuff. I mean, everybody has a level of stuff. Um, a, a true hoarding situation is usually fairly rare, but as we get older, we tend to hold on to stuff and it's just, you know, the energy of getting rid of stuff. Sometimes you're like, yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. And it starts to accumulate around you. So that's pretty, pretty typical, actually. So you got remarried when you were 75. Is that about right? Uh, yeah, we've been married uh, 17, 18 years. Yeah. And then um, you and Shirley moved into a new home together. We bought this house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you didn't bring very much into the house, but she brought the majority of what she had in her previous home into this home. Yeah. Plus it's built over the years. She didn't, <laughs> mind, she didn't mind buying stuff. And yeah, we got, we, we, we got a lot of stuff. So it's interesting because often when I'm thinking about, you know, my parents, my grandparents, they lived in the same home for a long, long time. So like you said, your previous home, you bought, you know, in 1959, you said, so you had, you know, 40 years worth of accumulation in that house before you moved. And if you, the current generations, young people today, they move a lot, like they move a lot. And well, every time you move, you get rid of a lot of stuff. So if you don't move very often, you tend to end up with more to go through when you get ready to get organized. Well, my first wife passed on from cancer in uh, 1995. Mm -hmm. And sorry, oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry too. She was a sweetie, mm -hmm. but uh, anyway, I had to take care of the house from 1995 until Shirley and I got together and got married eventually. I was single probably for five years, so I had the house 
somewhat cleaned out. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, I, no, I lived fine. I didn't have any problems. Mm-hmm. And then when you got married to Shirley, she took over the paperwork at that point and, and some of the housework back? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, she, yeah, she collected paper like you would. I used to call her the bag lady. And then she'd laugh. She knew I was just joking with her, but we had more paper sacks than a market has total. And how did that make you feel? I didn't care. It -hmm. didn't matter. I mean, it was her home too. So yeah, you get used to it. So you just don't pay attention. I'd sneak out a bunch of bags and throw them away every little bit because we just had so many, really. But so no. when, when Lori started talking about getting your paper organized, getting your home organized, which ended up being get your paper organized, at first, did you think, meh, it doesn't matter? Or what was your first thought? Like, oh, this would be a good project? Or I what were you thinking? Me, I just told her, let's go for it. I so thought it was a good project. Yes, it made sense. Mm-hmm. I didn't know it was going to be as much work as it was, but to get it to get it organized. But uh, there's what two, four, five. There's five or six of your books over here now that are full. Mm-hmm. And uh, if I need something, I know where to go get it. And Truth- that's awesome. Truthfully, yeah. And I don't think I'll say what I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> Well, Lori, can you? It wasn't bad. It was just in case somebody else saw this that had no business to know what I was thinking. So it was a lot of work, right? It wasn't a lot of work, but we got it done. So, Lori, can you kind of walk through, you know, January? um, Shirley went into the Alzheimer's unit and you started coming over a little bit. And then in May, you basically moved in. So, what has this year? been like for you like what did you think it was going to be like and then what was the reality of what it was like (laughs) well in the beginning part of the year as a teacher we were on zoom so I could zoom at home in the morning with my students and on my lunch break drive over here Mm -hmm. and do my afternoon zooms from the kitchen table then I'm right here to take care of dinner for him and do a little bit of something around the house just to kind of Mm -hmm. help out and be supportive that worked out really well I know COVID Mm -hmm. was icky and horrible and still is, but that part was a blessing for us because I could be here for my dad. And then as we were talking about where are those important papers and dad had no idea, we talked about me coming over and spending some time to just go through papers. I had never seen how the papers were. I had no idea how bad it really was. We thought maybe take a couple days off work plus a weekend, that should be good. Nope, that wasn't even close to what was needed. And we found that a lot of the important papers weren't even in the house and we had to order new copies. So when I was doing the papers, just papers, I was up long before him and I would stay awake after he went to bed. So I was doing 16 to 18 hour days. Oh my gosh. That's how the paper, it was seriously, seriously tough to get through papers. And she even had uh, two friends come over to help her go through a lot of this paper. Yeah, just to get it started, I had a friend come and just help me get a little traction, just to get motivated. uh, I just opened a book here a minute ago and found that, which is a, (laughs) you may not be able to read that, but it's a a card to get you in a room on a cruise ship. (laughs) And it's dated uh, 12 or 14. Mm -hmm. I just opened the book and this fell out just a minute ago. So we find stuff, all kinds of things in really strange places. Well, she didn't believe me getting rid of that. I know. So Lori, you're working 16 to 18 hour days. I assume this is in the summer. Summertime, not, yeah. Okay. How many weeks were you doing that? All of May, June, and July. And then school started at the beginning of August. And at that point, we needed to call 911. Thank goodness we had our medical binder for dad. Mm. Even the paramedics were like, wow, this is pretty awesome. (laughs) Yeah, she handed him the book and he looked at it. He was going on taking information from it. And uh, yeah, they're very helpful. They are, they're very helpful. And all the nurses and the doctor got a little lesson on the medical binder as well. Everybody. Good work, Lori. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, because it's so important to have stuff organized, especially when you have an emergency. I've told so many people about the medical binder. 
everybody you run into yeah. are you kidding me yeah so were you hospitalized at that time or discharged i had, I had surgery okay yeah, they, my intestines down down on my right side got tangled up somehow, and they had to untangle them. They did it with a robot, by the way. Unbelievable. I yeah, mean... it's a big round thing. It was bigger than a tabletop <sighs> with little arms on it, and they punched holes in me and was able to do this, and that's all. They just put Band-Aids on the surgery, and they didn't have to cut me at all. Well, I'm so glad that uh, it worked and you're feeling it, better. It, well, I'm, I'm fine. I'm healed. They told me just the other day that the doctor did. I went in for regular checkup. He said, Jay, you've got the heart and lungs of a 19 year old kid. He one of them told me he expected me to live to about 115. Now, That's fine with me. I always, nice. figure, I always figure I'll be lucky if I last till in the morning, <laughs> tomorrow morning. So there are doctors that are predicting over 100 years. Yes, I want to go to that doctor. <laughs> he's, he's a nice guy, a real nice man. Good doctor. So how long were you away from home or was it just a couple of days or? Oh, it was About six, six, six okay. days. I think okay. I was in the hospital. Okay. They, they were concerned about my age mm -hmm. and they were hearing a little bit of a heart murmur or something mm -hmm. that, that has never bothered me. And uh, they considered not even doing surgery because of my heart murmur. And then the, the guy, head guy at the hospital came in. He said, talked with me a while. And he says, yeah, I'm going to okay you to go ahead and have the surgery. And it went mm -hmm. fine. They, they did that with my grandfather when he was 94. Did they? And gave wow. him a uh, heart surgery to replace a valve, a heart valve, which he was the oldest um, candidate at the Cleveland Clinic to get a open heart surgery at the time. Wow. And they said, but he's so healthy, they couldn't deny the surgery. So mm -hmm. they did the surgery. They had to use a bone saw, though, to get the valve out because it was so calcified. Oh, wow. And he lived to be 103. Wow. Good for him. Yeah. yeah. And he was healthy as a horse until like 101 when Alzheimer's then set in well, before that. You, know, you, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> they uh, told me about my wife that she's had this for how long? 10, 12 years. But oh, wow. I was, well, I was able to take care of her and mm -hmm. until... Last three years, it got just outrageous, and then we finally had to do something about it. I got to where I couldn't pick her up when she, if she'd fall on the floor, which happened, yeah. and I'd have to call paramedics, and that's three thousand dollars to have them come out here. Mm -hmm. And so I just decided it's time to put her where she can have total care, and she's doing very well. Well, it is um, the caregiving aspect is very exhausting uh, yeah, to be. Well, you think about you know, my, my daughter just had a baby. So we've got a grandbaby in the house and taking care of a newborn is exhausting. Oh, yes, yes. Um, and mm -hmm. care, you know, being responsible for someone who, who relies on you, uh, is a huge emotional and mental and spiritual, yeah. um, gift that you're giving. Mm -hmm. And at some point you need to also take care of yourself so that you can still have that relationship with them as well. So it's it's totally understandable. I remember when my grandmother put my grandfather in an Alzheimer's unit as well. She would go over and she would visit and um, she needed that for her to be healthy also. Mm -hmm. So I, I totally understand when it gets to be just a little bit too much. Well, yes, <laughs> it mm -hmm. certainly gets that way. And it's, it's more difficult, by the way, to put a individual in one of these homes than it is to have them pass on. Uh, mm. That may sound heartless, but it's not because I've gone through both. Mm. <clears throat> and I found when my wife passed, I knew she was gone. And that was the end of it. Uh, when Shirley was put in this home, she's confined there and can't leave. Because now if you leave, you, they've got to... Uh, put her in a room for 10 days to isolate her. Mm. And uh, that wouldn't be fair to her. And so it's, it's, it's a whole different ball game, but it hurts your heart. I'm so sorry. You know they're there and there's nothing you can do about it except go see them. And I think now she might remember five, 10 minutes after I've left, but she does know me when I go there. And bless mm -hmm. her heart, she's still my sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. You know, every stage of life has, um, has its struggles and has its blessings, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. Because if, 
you weren't in this phase of life, Lori wouldn't be living with you, right? That's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, to have her around. She, she's a good cook. <laughs> Oh, are you? Hey, I'm coming over. How far? How far of a drive is it for me? It doesn't matter. It's okay. Oh, are, are you in Cleveland? You. Where are you? Where are you located in Cleveland? I'm in Cincinnati. Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah, where are you? Southern California, Downey, suburb Downey. of LA. Oh, that's you know, that has we're, to be an airplane. Sorry, that's not a drive. No, that's we're 14 miles from the ocean, from the Pacific Ocean. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. We don't go down there very often because if you've seen it as many times as we have, and I used to spend most of my teen years on the beach getting sunburns and blisters and every other thing, and you just don't go down there every day. Yeah. Once in a while. So after you got back out of the hospital and recovered, Lori, is the paper done yet? Can you tell us the paper's done? Well, the <laughs> notebooks are completed. Now we're in the maintenance of the notebooks phase and working on making the Sunday basket a regular routine. And as he's ready to declutter or dive into a specific area or a topic or a theme, for instance, ask him about the candles. Okay. Um, then Which we candle? then we can do it. But to <laughs> but to just do the whole house, no, because you know it's a sensitive kind of situation. Surely mm -hmm. stuff is everywhere. We want to be respectful of all of the things that are here that are yeah. precious. But dad, tell her about the candles. Well, the candles with an S. Yes. How many did I take to the thrift shop? Wait. I took so many candles and gave them to the thrift shop. And Shirley used to belong to the uh, women's organization. <coughs> Excuse me. And I took so many candles down there. They asked me not to bring any more. <laughs> Wait, yeah. I and asked him if, if we could start looking at how many candles there were. I think, honestly, Tell me if I'm wrong. I think we may have found throughout the house, stashed in all kinds of places, probably three or four hundred candles, and about a third to a half of them were already burned. Yeah, wow. just say, yeah they'd be burned down to those short guys, but we kept them, and they're all stored up above. And the, they're all over the place. Yeah, so. they're all over the house, really. But anyway, we got rid of all those, and then then they eventually asked me, "Do I have any more candles? Because all of they're all in, in paper sealed and." Brand new. Yeah. And they said, Do you have any more candles? We already run out. And I said, You told me not to bring any more. And they, they were looking for more. And I said, No, I gave them all away. My neighbor took a whole bunch of them because they were brand new, just like you go in the store and buy them wrapped and everything. Well, I'm thinking also in like disaster preparedness, you've got to have candles in there. Like, I mean, I don't know. Well, these were the decorative things you'd sit around the house to look. And smelly ones, smelly candles, and just every kind. If your every power's place. out, they still work. <laughs> I would still light uh -huh. one. It smells like uh -huh. pumpkins, and the power's out. <laughs> I got flashlights and every other thing around here anyway, so we don't need them. So when you guys are saying notebooks, you mean the organized 365 binders, yes. right? Yes. Just clarifying for the podcast yes. people. They're like, how come Lisa didn't tell me about the notebooks? <laughs> That's what they're going to say. <laughs> they're talking about the binders. Um, I know okay, so because they're right there. <laughs> I'm, I'm here within three feet of them. So now all of your important papers were either ordered or have been found and they're organized. So you have your financial papers, you have your medical papers, you have the house related mm -hmm. papers. Okay. So now you're moving on into the 108. You're moving on to actually organizing what's in the house. And it sounds like you are, first of all, like you've identified, okay, candles are something that you don't want to have all of, but maybe some of, so you've got all the candles from everywhere in the entire house and then decide which ones to save and mm -hmm. eliminate it as many as possible. And, and you're going after categories that have less emotional attachment or possible use that you can pass on to other people instead of just doing everything in the kitchen, everything in the family room, everything well, in the bed. Interestingly, the very first thing that he wanted to do, and I'm following his energy because it's his house, Love it. his stuff. Mm -hmm. The first thing he wanted to do, he's never heard your podcast. He doesn't know anything about Organize 365. <laughs> the first thing he wanted to do was deal with the kitchen. Yes. <laughs> I'm not kidding. He said it. We started out <laughs> in the kitchen. We did. We had to. It was, she has, and we still, I still have, uh, what are they, pottery dishes that six plates must weigh 10 pounds. They're very heavy. And she had two sets of them in the kitchen. Oh, there were like five and sets in there. there was five cabinet. different sets of dishes 
in mm -hmm. this one cabinet and it was actually pulling loose from the from the ceiling from the wall <laughs> there was something well, from the ceiling because it's yeah. hung from the ceiling is down about uh, oh, a quarter of an inch now and it didn't used to be so it had to be from all that weight so the first place we started was in that cabinet and then we went through the, almost the whole thing. We still got one cabinet full of glasses that uh, are never used. And so we're going to go through that. But, and basically, those are all going to go to the first shelf. It's whenever he's ready, that's when we deal with that area. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's very understanding about that, Lori. And how have you felt about this whole year of, you know, this whole process of really understanding all the things that are in your house i never knew actually before you go any further i never knew you could could uh, straighten things up like this i never had to face that i used to take care of all my uh own tax returns and all that stuff and i had different envelopes that i'd put things in so when it's tax time we had it to, to send but that's when i was living alone and then for the last 17 years, Shirley's done it her way. And I let her because there's no reason to argue about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, we came up in the mess we were in. It's a lot better now, thanks to this one. So, Lori, would you say that your dad is probably a natural minimalist? I would say probably yes, but not to the extreme that I see minimal minimalism promoted is that, he any, just, is that anything like a preacher no no <laughs> <laughs> no it just means that you don't have a lot of stuff like you yeah, just, just naturally you don't have a lot of extra stuff around he doesn't now tools are a different matter the garage is you know pretty seriously his domain but Passion in the house, project in the house he doesn't need a lot of stuff you know mm -hmm. he's a guy mm -hmm. he doesn't need all that stuff that's right but i'm a school teacher so i have stuff everywhere <gasps> Do you, are your tools organized, JB? Pretty much. I can go out there and find anything, buy anything you need. And what do you do with your tools? Like, what well, do you I'm, like to? I used to work build on. stuff. Yeah, I yeah. used to build things. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What was your profession? I was a salesperson. I was a salesman for a so spray, spray equipment company. We manufactured spray guns, air compressors, uh, and in automotive. That paint too. paint anything mm -hmm. to put on liquid paint or liquid color like ppg things like that well sir williams any any paint company that made yeah we put the paint on so my dad started with sherwin williams that was his very first job out of college and he oh, was a salesman really? mm -hmm. i went to work with dun edwards paint company out here i don't know if you get that paint back there or not but uh, mm -hmm. i worked with them right out of school he started there and then he ended up as the regional sales manager for Glidden Paint. Oh, good. They're, yeah, they're a good company. Mm -hmm. In the 70s and mm -hmm. then moved on to the next thing. But yeah, he was a salesman as well. Good. I traveled a lot. Uh, uh huh. So, uh, Los Angeles is a big place and there were four of us covering Los Angeles. I had the wow. south, southwest section of it. And then I had clear on down to San Diego, which is 120 miles away. I'd go down there three days at a time. And then that changed. And I had Bakersfield for a while, which is 120 miles north. And all up along the coast, clear up to Ventura and up in that area. And then I had all of uh, Arizona that I covered for a long time. So I did a lot of traveling. I had a police officer stop me going to Tucson one day. I was doing 97 miles an hour. No, you can't say those things. My son will hear you. <laughs> well, I was on the highway alone in a brand new car. And it was a big Buick, uh, heavy. And uh, there was no problem. And this police officer followed me for about 12 miles before he pulled me over. And we chatted for a while. He says, you know what? I'm not going to write you a ticket. He said, it's obvious you know how to drive. <laughs> He said, you drive more miles every year than I do. <clears throat> so anyway, that's that was my profession. I called industrially. Uh, <clears throat> I called on some glit and paint stores. Sherm Williams had done it. Yeah. Declare paint, a lot of. And uh, then we became involved a lot with uh, uh, automated equipment, like mm -hmm. purses are painted. By the way, the cowhides are, are painted. Oh. 
we did that. Uh, I could go on for hours about that stuff, but uh, we got, I, got, I had the pleasure of working on the Saturn S2 rocket that sent the guys to the moon, around the moon. Wow. Wow. Uh, you remember, uh, you remember Apollo 13, the movie? Mm -hmm. you, yep. know how, you know how large the hole was in the side of the Apollo rocket? <clears throat> you want to venture a guess? No. No, no, you could throw a Cadillac endwise through the hole. Oh, my goodness. The hole was almost 20, 20 feet across. Wow. The, the rocket itself was 34 and a half feet across the center of the diameter. Big. And it stood up 327 feet high. That's hard to believe unless you step it off. And it's it's yeah. long, you know, it's, it's just long and big. Okay, well, I could I could talk to you about your life all day long because I love to talk to people about their life. I don't know if everybody on the podcast wants to hear about it, so I'm going to pull it back to organization, but I <laughs> could stop recording and ask more questions about that. Um, Lori, I want to ask you, so... One of the things I talk about a lot in the podcast is that, you know, decluttering your parents' home is just a natural rite of passage. Like sometime in life, you were going to go through this home with your dad uh, or without your dad. You were going to go through this home. You were going to spend this amount of time going through this. And I think you have this blessing of having had this time with your dad. And I know that um, it's a mindset you've, you've chosen to have this be a blessing, to have dad have a YouTube channel, to share dad in the community with us. Like you really embrace that this is the season you're in and we're going to be in it and we're going to be happy about it, um, which is a testimony to you. And I think a lot of people in Organized 365 are now realizing, oh, okay, this isn't being put upon me. This isn't, woe is me. This is a life stage. I'm watching other people go through it. And I'm choosing how I want to go through it. Similarly, like as a teacher, you get to choose like, okay, I've been teaching for a couple of years. I see all these different teacher models. I'm going to model my classroom after that teacher. I'm going to model my organization after that teacher. Um, so I think we're providing some real life examples of how people are going through these life stages that often are not talked about because they are so time intensive and exhausting that where would you find out how other people are helping their parents organize their house in their 90s. Like, that's not really like a Googleable thing. Not really. So I know you've already been on the podcast and we can link to your past podcast episode, but can you just refresh people? Like, what is your life situation? How were you able to, to do this at this time? Well, I'm, I'm on my own. I'm divorced. So I don't have anybody who's expecting me to be in another home. My home is sitting empty at this point, which is fine because my priority is here with my dad. And we go out there a little bit. <clears throat> In fact, we've got to go out there, excuse me, tomorrow or the next day. <clears throat> but yeah, we go there once in a while. Yeah. So for me, my focus is my dad and my classroom is closer here than it is for me to drive from home. So that's kind of good for me too. Um, but I get this time with my dad that I would not otherwise mm -hmm. have. True. Yeah. Yeah. And I like it too. You like it too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got someone to talk with and she never stops talking. Being a first grade <laughs> teacher, she don't know what it is to be quiet. So we can all you, you get your quiet when she's at school. Yes, I do. <laughs> she goes off on the school bus and I she comes back. Not look, try not to look in the mirror and talk to myself, you know. <laughs> We're going to get you the guy to listen to the podcast. <laughs> he does so, a lot of reading. So he's, he's always involved in a book. I love to read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And JB, I don't and, have to use glasses either, by the way. What? No, I don't. Wow. I don't have them on. So I, I went and bought a pair a while back because I was having headaches and that's amazing. Headache, so I guess the glasses didn't help. Any. I got him some blue light glasses because he uses an e-reader sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I read a new, I sit down and read a newspaper like this paper. I can read that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, said, I can't. <laughs> I'm 50. Really? So you're way up on me on that. JB, in this last year, since Lori's been helping you get organized, what do you think that you have 
more of now that you know where all your papers are? Like, do you feel like you have more of anything now? Well, I got time to do what I want to do. Or I didn't, well, I, before I'd spend time all day long looking for a single piece of paper or our, our, uh, my car registration. <laughs> Nowhere to be found. Still haven't found the original. But we sent away and got, got a new one. And what else do we hunt for? So long. Your marriage certificate? Yeah, we your deed to your house? We couldn't find the deed. We couldn't find a marriage certificate. Oh. We have other properties that we couldn't find the deeds to. We, I know where they are now. But I didn't know that then. And it, I never would have found them, I don't believe. What do you spend your time doing? Well, sometimes if I get bored, I just go out in the garage and put a bird bird cage or bird house together or something. Just I had him making Christmas gifts for my students in my classroom. Yes, yeah, so if you didn't see in the app, um, Lori shared a picture of a Christmas tree she put in the classroom. And mm -hmm. JB, you made ornaments for each kid, didn't you? All those little kids had their names, yeah. They were all excited about that. That is so neat. Yeah, um, fun. yeah, it's not necessary. Like those kids didn't have to have ornaments at Christmas from their first grade teacher, but oh. it's a more fun use of your time than looking for paper. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Much more. Is there anything else you like to spend your time doing um, in addition to reading and kind of well, working I've... in the garage? I have 37 rose bushes that takes a lot of care. Wow, and I can't I, take care of roses. Uh, they're a job, but I got pretty soon I'll have to go out and trim them all back. Uh -huh. but, uh, I have people stop out in the street to, and get out of their car and take pictures of them sometimes. And I've had people walk up in the driveway to look at them. They're beautiful. They really are. And I have, uh, they're all, they're, each one of them is different color. You have 37 different colors? Yeah, well, 35 actually, because there's there's one in each corner out in the front yard that that are multicolored. Wow. There's two colors in one bush, and there's two of them. There's one on each side of the driveway, or each side of the yard. They were grafted together to be two different colors on yeah. one plant. Yeah, yeah. that's so they're, cool. They're big round and they 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 look like a bouquet when they when they blossom in the springtime, especially. So one of the things that we share on uh, social media, which Lori can show you, is how we spend our extra time that we have now that we are more organized. So we're not looking for things. We have time to make those ornaments for Lori's classroom, to work on your roses, to read a book. Do you think you and Lori could send in um, pictures of that Christmas tree with the ornaments and of your beautiful roses for us to share? Well, they're not very... We can find pictures of the roses. <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of them. <laughs> that would be awesome. We would love to see those with you in there. Oh, and, what his, you... and his cooking. <laughs> I thought you were cooking. Oh, but he does too. Oh, well, okay. I am coming to Southern California then. Okay. Do you like biscuits and gravy? That's one of dad's. I favorite. don't know. I'm sure I will. <laughs> like any food. You've never made. had it? Well, you're not from the South. I'm not. I've had, I mean, I think I've had biscuits. It's no, it's not a Cincinnati staple. I can tell you that. Well, it is in the South. I know. It's so simple to make. I'm sure he would love Culver's onion rings. <laughs> That's not <laughs> going to help him live to 115, though. That's not necessarily a good recommendation. His doctor would not approve. So, JB, is there anything that you wish that you had known sooner? You know what? I just kind of let Shirley do what Shirley wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I didn't argue with it. Uh, I wouldn't argue with it today. If it weren't straightened out, I'd still be in a mess. But well, but you brought those books over and showed them to me and, and started in and, and now we're where we are now, which is great. And I think <laughs> what I like about that is um, you know, the family that you have today. And how you are living, I don't think you necessarily need to change your past story in order to get organized starting at the age of 92. Like, it's it's not a problem. Like, you enjoyed your marriage, you enjoyed your house with Shirley, and now you're enjoying your, your year with Lori. Um, like, you're enjoying all of your years. So I think that that is a beautiful story. 
Well, see, I don't think I have any better sense. I've learned to just enjoy myself wherever I am. I think it's a great lesson we all could <laughs> learn from. Well, I, I guess I try to avoid the hard stuff. I don't know. I've worked hard all my life. Uh, mm -hmm. I wore a suit every day as a salesman, and if you call that work. But anyway, I have, yeah. One thing he said to me was that he never knew organizational things like this even existed. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I'm sort of glad I got them now. And what would you say to somebody who's listening to this? It's the first time they've listened to a podcast. They've listened to your story. They also didn't know these organizational things existed. What would you, what advice would you give them if they're well, just like how getting would, started? How, how would you go about telling people how to get a hold of you or get a hold of your company? Oh, you know how you turn on the TV and you just watch a show? Some people log into a podcast and they just stumble upon this this show. It's like it's like a radio well, show. That don't get the uh, to me that wouldn't get reach the masses. Well, what it? advice would you give somebody? <laughs> You're going to give me marketing advice. I love it. How do I reach <laughs> the masses, Jamie? Well, oh, that's how. That's Let the salesman talk. That's what you're in business she, for. And she's doing a great job. She, I so, know she is. I'm, I don't know. What that advice at all. would you give somebody who's just listening to this for the first time and they're curious? If she's listening to this for yes. oh, yeah. get a hold of her. <laughs> <laughs> you got to start someplace. And unless they yeah. have this 365 stuff, they, they don't, wouldn't know where to start. What I would, wouldn't. What would you say about papers and house? What would you tackle first? What would you suggest somebody well, work on first? You best get into the paperwork because that's what you're going to need eventually. When you get my age, you see things coming to an end. <laughs> Let's be realistic here. Uh, you need to have this stuff in, in order because it's, it's a total mess if you don't have. If anybody had walked in this house before we straightened it up with the paperwork, with this organization, uh, they wouldn't have known what to do. They'd probably all gone in the trash can to start over because it mm. was truly a, truly a mess, truly a mess. Some of it still is. So as a, as a salesman now, Lori, let him talk. What should I do? <laughs> what should I do to reach, you know, you're not listening to a podcast, JB. How can I get to your friends so that they can get started on their papers? I don't know unless it was on television. Yeah. I don't know. People watch TV. I know it must be expensive. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But uh, you you would reach far more people mm -hmm. if if you had a spot on TV. Mm -hmm. Don't try to get it on the uh, what's a big football game coming up? Super Bowl. Costs a million bucks for thirty seconds. <laughs> And We'd be no, I'm not Bowl. advertising on the Super Bowl. That'd be hysterical. Hi, you want to organize your papers? People are like, get her off yeah. there. Put I'd the Doritos them... ad back on. Where are yeah. my Bud Light people? I, I like that. <laughs> that worked well. They just be like, like you can't, you can't eat Doritos if you can't find your. <laughs> That's right. You can't find the bag. <clears throat> Oh, well, this has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much for having this conversation with me. I know you don't believe it, but there are thousands of people who are going to listen to this podcast and they are going to take a lot away from it because um, they too are helping their parents get their paper organized. And JB, you're not the only person in their 90s that listens to the Organized 365 podcast. Good. I, I would advise them all to get involved because it's, it's the only way to, that you're going to survive paperwork yeah. it's real you and Lori, it in a, you stuff it in a file cabinet and it's lost really uh, yeah these these books keep it clean well really jb clean. thank you Lori. You thank you for facilitating things. all of this so nice to see you again as well um i just really appreciate you guys sharing your story well, anytime nice to chat with you always yeah thank you thank you <laughs>